Hello, my name is Chris, and today we'll be going over a few good fan setups for your FormD T1. The FormD T1 is a 9.95 liter ITX case from FormD Works. This case is super compact and versatile as it has the ability to fit up to a 240 millimeter radiator. For this test, we'll be using the new Master Liquid Atmos from Cooler Master. The Atmos is a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler with a 53 millimeter tall CPU pump cover. This cooler is fully compatible in 1 to 3 slot configurations and partially compatible in the 3.25 slot option if you remove the tinted plastic pump cover. A popular fan configuration for this case would be to use a standard 240mm radiator with one slim 15mm fan and one 25mm regular fan. However, I'm interested in seeing which fan setup yields the best results and if you should consider the alternative 3D print AIO top hat. We'll be testing three fan configuration options, dual 15mm fans, one 15mm fan and one 25mm fan, and dual 25mm fans with the 3D printed AIO top hat. For the fan lineup, we have the Noctua NF A12 25mm Chromax in black, the Cooler Master Circle Flow Edge RGB, and the small but powerful Arctic E12 Slim. I chose these fans as two of them are very common for this build, and the Circle Flow Edge RGB actually came with the Master Liquid Ammos. I'll swap between the stock T1 aluminum top panel and the 3D printed AIO top hat. For best results, I start by prepping the processor, remove the pump head, and apply a fresh application of thermal paste. Be sure to thoroughly clean your processor um, as any remaining thermal paste could skew results. However, the old thermal paste on here is only a few weeks old, so it's not really tough to get off. Today, we'll be using Thermal Grizzly's Cryonite Extreme. I'm very excited to use this product as I see great reviews. The Cryonite Extreme comes with this very convenient nozzle slash spreader that makes applying the paste very easy. I am spreading the paste evenly across the top, being sure to cover the entire surface with paste. I'm not too worried about any overspill as the AM5 bracket will catch any spillage after bolting the AIO back down. Before each test, I set the appropriate CPU profile. In this instance, it's on the 105 watt eco mode. Then I set the correct fan speed for the test. I let the fans run at that speed for three minutes so that the CPU has enough time to cool between tests. Testing the 105 watt mode versus stock should give you similar results if you want to try this for yourself. I usually run this CPU with a negative 18 curve optimization, but using a curve optimizer will vary from CPU to CPU depending on the silicon quality. So using eco mode in this scenario makes the most sense. I run Cinemesh three times and use a third score for results. Here are the CPU results, then I'll do a quick summary at the end. There is a lot of data to go through, so we're going to start with stock, which I ran at 50% fan speed. If you were to go with a mixed configuration, you're going to see that the P12 Slim and the Noctua has the best idle temperatures at 46 degrees. And under low, the P12 Slim and the Noctua also has the best Cinebench score at 27,887. With the top hat option, with the two 25mm fans, we see under idle, the Noctua and the Superflow both share the same temperature at 45 degrees Celsius. And under load, the Silver Flow beats out the Noctua with a cinema score of 28,039. 
Last, we only tested one slim fan, which is a P12 slim. And we see that at idle is 46 degrees and under load is 95 degrees with a Cinebench score of 27,674. Not bad. On this test, we used the Eco mode at 105 watts with 25% fan speed. On the mixed configuration, we see that at idle, the P12 Slim and Noctua have the best temperature at 48 degrees Celsius. And under low, the P12 Slim and Noctua have the best Cinebench score at 26,663. On the 25 millimeter configuration under idle, we see the Noctua beats out the sickle flow with 48 degrees Celsius. However, under low, the sickle flow beats the Noctua with a marginally better Cinebench score of 26,901. The last option is the most interesting with a dual 15 millimeter setup. Under idle, the P12 Slim has the same idle temperature as a Noctua at 48 degrees Celsius. However, it has a better Cinebench score than a Noctua at 26,620. I believe this is because on the 15 millimeter option, we're using the AIO bracket that comes with the Form D T1, which positions the radiator and fans higher up in the chassis, providing better airflow. With the same eco mode, but with 50% fan speed, we see under this first category, the best idling temperature goes to the P12 Slim and Noctua at 46 degrees Celsius again. And under load, the same P12 Slim plus Noctua has the best temperature at 92 degrees Celsius and the best Cinebench score at 27,594. Next category, under IDO, we have the Sickle Flow beat out the Noctua, this time at 45 degrees Celsius. And under load, we have the Sickle Flow beat out the Noctua again with a low temperature of 90 and the best Cinebench score of 27,606. Last, we see the P12 Slim has the same temperature as it did at the 25% fan speed at 48 degrees Celsius. And under load, it has the temperature at 94 degrees Celsius and a Cinebench score of 27,462. Lastly, with the same eco mode, but at 100% fan speed, the first category, we see that the P12 Slim and Noctua have the best temperatures at 44 degrees Celsius. And under load, the same with the P12 Slim and Noctua at 84 degrees Celsius, with the best Cinebench score at 27,835. Next, under idle, we see the Sickle Flow and Noctua are tied at 45 degrees Celsius. While under low, the Sickle Flow beats out the Noctua with a lower temperature of 85 degrees Celsius and a better score of 27,938. Last but not least, we have the P12 Slim coming in at one degree cooler at 47 degrees Celsius under idle and under load, 88 degrees Celsius with a Cinebench score of 27,795. In conclusion, I feel like you can't go wrong with any of these setups. However, I do believe that these two setups are very comparable and both use the Form DT1 top panel. You will see better thermals with the first option as it's using one slim fan and one regular fan. But if you want to save space and have more room for cable management, I highly advise you go with the dual 15 millimeter option. The dual 25 millimeter option represents the best of both worlds. You get the best airflow while still having a lot of space for cable management, seeing that the fan and radiator are sitting higher up in the chassis. The only con with this setup is that you have to use a 3D printed top hat and it does take away from the sleek look of the Formula T1. If I had to choose, I'd stay with the sleek look of the Formula T1 and I'd go with the dual P12 Slim fans. The P12 Slim offers comparative thermals with marginally lower performance. The Noctua NF A12 25mm fan is the best overall fan out of this lineup as it offers top level cooling and is very silent. The Cooler Master Sickle Flow Edge RGB fan is a decent option. Although it has very similar cooling capabilities as the Noctua, it does so with a substantially louder sound profile. So loud actually, it was becoming annoying during testing. And the RGB has a dedicated cable adding bulk to our already tight setup. This concludes my findings. I tried to provide you with as much data and comparison that I had available. I would like to thank the people that followed me after my last official video on this channel. It means a lot to see my hard work pay off. 
Thank you for those watching now. I am very appreciative of your support. If you like what you see here, please hit the like button. If you want to see more content in the future, please subscribe. Currently, I am aiming to release one video a week. Thank you again. See you next time.